ladies and gentlemen, we are in London, which is a very rare occurrence for this channel. In fact, it might be the first occurrence for this channel. I'm doing something that I cannot believe I'm getting to do, and it's been a dream of mine. But I don't know. This, you know, it's so far from ever thought could happen that I don't even think it was a dream. It's just been a really awesome, well hopefully it'll be a really awesome experience that I can't believe I get to do and it's all because of this YouTube channel and social media presence because I am off to meet yeah. and sketch and draw with one of, if not, what? yeah, one of, pretty much up there right at the top of the list, my favourite artist sketching idol ever but I won't tell you who it is, I'm going to save it until we meet him but anyone that knows London might know that I'm currently walking across the Thames I got off an embankment could have got off at Westminster the London Eye is right there but not where I'm heading uh, but points for you go to the comments below if you can guess where I'm about to go a marine biologist in London London Aquarium, if you guessed right, congratulations. And I can't wait to have an amazing day sketching with an amazing illustrator here. Hi. <laughs> so let's, um, you'll see what we get up to now. Straight away, I was just glad to be with someone that got as distracted by the wondrous fish in aquariums as I did because as soon as we walked through the door we were both mesmerised by this tank of fish which was the first tank and sat down to draw these amazing creatures. For me, drawing these long spine snipe fish definitely started this day off with a challenge. They're amazing, amazing snout noses were fantastic to look at but provided a, a, an added challenge when it came to drawing them in perspective but just getting to watch Tim Pond draw and bring these species to life on paper was mesmerizing and I learned so so much. Tim was so unbelievably generous with spending his time sketching with me today and also trying to teach me so much uh, and give me so much information on improving my sketching from life I was really really grateful here he's given me a tip that to kind of add a bit more 3d effect don't shade if there's darkness and light coming from the bottom just leave a little gap and it kind of helps just space out the the drawing a bit and give it a bit more of a 3d look which is a really quick and neat tip to use and that is exactly what tim pond's drawing and sketching is all about his whole drawing style and you'll see as we go through this video is about being able to really to capture the perspective of all these animals super quickly here is a tip to kind of catch the center of an, an animal and make sure that the rest of it is lined up making kind of a tube and a cross will give you the the center uh, line that you can kind of work around so that if you're looking at something head on or, or at a slight angle you can kind of keep everything still in proportions very simply and this is what makes drawing in an aquarium so hard is capturing the essence of an animal that is constantly moving when you have limited time and honestly Tim is just filled with so much knowledge and facts about this that you're definitely going to learn some stuff in the rest of this video. With this fish this was the first time I saw Tim draw and with this and all the other drawings that he does you can see that he begins to section off the animals to look at them as their most basic shapes and that really helps to kind of break them up and make them uh, easier to draw. I wouldn't say that my own drawing were off to a great start, kind of help unhelped by the fact that these were so cartoony that I just wanted to draw them like amazing cartoon characters and I was so busy watching Tim draw but as we went on, the tons of facts that Tim was giving me, I was really kind of enjoying it and getting into it more. And it was such a great learning experience. And I mean, look at this sketchbook, double sketchbook page from him. Isn't that just, he did that in front of my very eyes. 
excited to see Atlantic Wolffish. They have been both part of my deep sea video and my uh, spooky Halloween video. But also, what characters are they? They are just the most hilarious, grumpy looking fish out there. And they have such ugly faces that make them fantastic to draw. And I think that my this was my favourite sketch that I did uh, of the day, I think. And uh, I, I just think it's all that creasy, haggard lines of their face were just super fun. And we were also kind of in a really busy spot, so we didn't have very long to draw them. And the pressure helped with this one, actually. Now, when it comes to drawing rays, difficult is probably not a word that cuts it. These are just so beautiful and graceful, but the weirdest, most 3D flat shapes out there. And we spent a good long time trying to capture these gliding fish at different angles. And it was great fun. And I quickly learned that I probably just had enough time to maybe draw a line or two to capture let's go with the essence of the fish itself um, and wasn't quite able to build up some solid 3d rays as yet but do have a go later on um, I was quite delighted slightly that Tim also found this a very challenging drawing experience but because of that we both got rather addicted to trying to capture these gorgeous rays and we're probably there for about an hour just drawing them but we decided to move on and what a good move that was because we went and found the shark tank <laughs> If you want to test every single skill that you have as a sketcher, then come and draw sharks. The challenge of capturing such a powerful creature that is almost so fluid, look at each single frame, it completely changes shape almost, and it was just a real pleasure to sketch and uh, definitely definitely tested uh, my ability and they're such creatures with such character as well everyone knows what a shark looks like so you you really don't want to get it wrong and you want to be able to capture that powerful nature of a shark in your drawings and so again me and Tim spent a lot of time drawing these and it was just wonderful <laughs> I know in this video I'm probably being super positive but I'm not gonna uh, apologize for it because it really was an absolutely fantastic day. I am so lucky to have this YouTube channel to connect me with people and to draw with my idol and look at these creatures. It was it was just a really really awesome experience. This is the real-time sketching of, of Tim. Um, he kindly let me film him uh, during the whole day. He was, it was really awesome. But just look how a few lines and a few bits of shading he can pull together. This very dynamic and very recognizable shark pose. And that's really the goal. The, the, the aim of, of sketches is to be able to capture these creatures so well and he was really good at explaining and if you look at the shading on the shark a way to capture the the power of the animal is to kind of emphasize the muscles and as i watched the shark it it was true the you can see that the moving uh, muscles that it has and in shading them and highlighting them it really begins to build this 3d uh, creature and also making sure you follow those lines through with the correct proportions uh, really helps kind of solidify that 
you, what you're drawing is correct and it's that creature and your brain can instantly go, yes, that is a shark. Another tip that Tim uh, uses is that he always draws the shark uh, straight first, like side on, as you can see with the kind of completed sketch um, there. And then he'll watch for different um, movements as the sharks or the fish kind of swim around and he'll pick a few poses and then he'll work into them and wait for the that animal to make that movement again and he'll come back and uh, redraw it in and that is a really good tip i feel like i spread myself too thin when i draw stuff and uh, i try and draw in that split second but really taking the time to pick a few poses and really hone in on them is definitely something um definitely something that is good practice. Okay, so not all my shark sketches are great, but I definitely feel like I'm getting that 3D more dynamic sketching even in the short time I've been sketching here. And that's kind of what it's all about, is having fun, trying, and uh, you can't be great straight away. So uh, I'm still, still trying, guys. Now I've spent long enough talking about sharks, let me swap back and give marine inverts some love. Look how fast this starfish is moving, it's running at full speed, it's the Usain Bolt of starfish. It's really, really awesome and uh, yeah, that's all. These are silver arowana fish and they are grumpy and weird. It was really cool to sketch and I'm speaking on behalf of Tim here but I know in particular he really enjoyed drawing uh, this species and it was great to watch someone um, kind of discover a species and draw it and have so much fun doing so. It was really nice to be with a like-minded sketcher and I think that's something that drawing from life gives you it gives you that extra connection to the species because you are seeing them you're getting a bit of their personality by watching them and you can really kind of put that slight emotion into uh, the sketches as well, as well as trying to be as accurate as possible and it's probably actually more difficult to be accurate uh, when you're drawing from life because the creatures keep moving and turning and you have to try and uh, get the uh, correct number of fins and where the fin rays are and all these different things and I was uh, very surprised but uh, Tim is also very diligent at that. It's he really cares about making sure that he's drawing every species correctly and uh, knowing the anatomy and getting it right and and making sure that he's representing that species as scientifically accurate as well as putting his own punch of personality into the sketches and that is kind of what his book is all about and it's a, a really a good book so a bit of a plug for Tim here the Field Guide to Drawing and Sketching Animals is Tim Pond's book all about basically drawing animals in life, drawing them in dynamic poses, drawing them getting the anatomy right, sketching outside and just kind of falling in love with animals as you draw them as well as kind of walking you through the animal kingdom so you get some great uh, fun facts from uh, about all the creatures that he's drawing as well. 
I really wish I kind of had a book like this uh, growing up. It would have been a great accompaniment book for learning to draw as I went and all of the tips and tricks he's kind of shared with me in person today and an absolute ton more because you physically couldn't read all of the uh, amazing facts in his book in one day and so I highly recommend getting that if you like his sketches if you want to learn more about drawing um, in aquariums drawing at zoos drawing outside drawing creatures from life or just animals in general it's a fantastic book uh, to have to hand and even if you don't want to draw then just get it for the illustrations because if you haven't been absolutely wowed by the sketches here today then you will definitely be a million percent more blown away by his entire book of illustrations, sketches, watercolour drawings I could spend hours just flipping through the pages, so definitely top of the list um, from me. And just to say that this video has completely come out of just me wanting to meet him and him wanting to meet me and wanting to sketch together and I just endorse his book and his work because I am such a fan and uh, there's no uh, sponsorship or there's no like money commitment from this it was just a wonderful day out and i really really do like his work and i mean who ever gets to meet someone who you admire so much i'd still i probably said this like four times in this video but still like come on that's crazy it's so good <laughs> i'm so lucky <laughs> So if you think rays and sharks are hard, well, try drawing a penguin. They are so fast. I have never seen a creature move so fast in my entire life. They are so, so impressive and so unbelievably clumsy on land. <laughs> but just watch how fast they move. I mean, we didn't stand much of a chance. And actually, do you know these guys have a bedtime about, I don't know, three o'clock in the afternoon. So as we did this and got to the end of our sketches, you can see my camera is almost in like night mode because they just slowly lowered the lights. I suppose that's one way to tell people that want to sketch stuff. Just, it's time to move on. I think the best thing that Tim said to me all day, even though he gave me a ton of tips and drawing advice, and just advice in general, <laughs> the best thing he said was when we sat down to draw uh, these jellyfish, which was a challenge because it was actually like a dark kind of corridor and it was just the jellyfish that were kind of lit up. So we were sitting there kind of drawing in the dark, but he called drawing jellyfish the jazz of drawing <laughs> and i just thought yeah it was so right our brains were a bit fried we'd spent a long time trying to get proportions right and perspective and then we could just let loose and draw a load of wiggly lines and no one could tell us we're wrong because jellyfish are just um just bl extra blobs they're blobs <laughs> with a lot of extraness around them and so it was really nice to just kind of just up uh, yeah just do whatever we wanted <laughs> it was good look it's a turtle ah! he's so cute i couldn't leave the aquarium without drawing the turtles that they have here they are just the most magnificent elegant slow clumsy creatures and they are, are they're so great and they're actually really really big I, I was surprised how big these guys were and provided a bit of a different um challenge and you could kind of tell that these guys are you know reptiles they're definitely different to the rest of the stuff there because just their anatomy uh, you kind of went from drawing all of these weird fin shapes and all of these circular shapes all day to 
drawing something that's quite square and her turtle was quite rigid and almost kind of cube like and watching Tim draw them you could really see that he used all the tools that you would use to drawing um, squares and and a much more kind of rigid uh, drawing to help him bring to life uh, his turtle sketches and uh, again reminded me <laughs> that maybe I should find some time to learn perspective and tips and tricks for that uh, which is something I'm trying but probably I haven't put as much time into as I should as a as a sketcher and you know that's why I admire Tim's work so much you can't draw like this and be so unbelievably skilled and kind of bring this turtle to life just in front of my eyes uh, without having uh, loads of experience and just the sheer number of sketches and the, the sketches you see in his book and the sketches in his sketchbook and everything you see today you know that this that he has so much experience he knows how to do it and I think being someone who's come from a background where I study science and I do art as um, more of a more of a hobby that seeing that kind of background with proper training and and being around someone with real skill is really inspiring and really pushes me to to keep working at my own art and it was it was great and we had great discussions about the fact that um, Tim is kind of the on the opposite end he's an artist that's really interested and passionate about the science and I think that's a great way to kind of we meet from from different sides of of the same like argument I suppose and and I love the fact that science and art are so interlinked because I think the thing that combines both of them is passion um you can be so unbelievably passionate about science and spend so unbelievably long looking at all of these different creatures and species that you study um every day and it's the same with artists and they really do go hand in hand and I think art can help science it can definitely help engage people it can definitely help the scientist it's helped me in my own um, identification skills because i can observe the species more and because i'm observing the species more i can draw the species better which is why i just generally tend to also enjoy drawing rock pooling and marine life better because that's what i get to look at all day and you can and tim has had so many facts and knew so many different things about the anatomy all these creatures that uh, even i didn't know and you could just see that he had become passionate about science and art was his his way of getting into that and i just think the more we can combine both the more we can just keep pushing uh to to produce scientific art to talk to people outside our disciplines to broaden our horizons uh, is the better because it can lead to fantastic opportunities like this so as we come to the end of the video unfortunately we were there from open till close we were probably one of the last few people to leave um, it was the greatest day and I just want to say thank you again Tim it was such an awesome experience and I know I've said it many times during this video but I really really did enjoy it so at the moment I am just a small youtuber trying to improve her drawing draw scientific art and explore the wonders of the UK coastline if that sounds like something of interest to you please subscribe because every subscriber really helps to grow a small channel and I can bring you more amazing videos like this so we have done at the Sea Life Aquarium. I had the best day. Fantastic. We had tons of sketching. I learned a lot, and hopefully you guys have learned a bit too with the whole video, and uh, you enjoy it. And uh, fingers crossed, this is the start of many sketching trips whenever we're whenever I'm down south. Be awesome. Have a great week, guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.